Hello friends! In my previous Gordon video, I showed you the process of designing and printing the model body. In this video, we'll be looking at the chassis and gearbox assembly. Because of the previous issues I'd faced with underpowered motors in my Thomas model, and Gordon being notoriously fast, I designed this model to use a 300 watt outrunner motor and a two cell LiPo battery, which looks comically oversized on this model. Unfortunately, these motors are designed to power remote control aeroplanes and have a KV rating of around 2200. This is how many rotations the motor does per volt applied per minute. Now I'm using a two cell battery which is around 7 volts. So at the top speed with no load this will rotate at around 15,000 RPM. This is obviously far too fast. The drive wheels on my G scale model have a circumference of 144 millimeters which is 0.14 meters. So in order to achieve a comfortable running speed around three meters per second, which scales up to around 100 miles per hour, which was the speed record set by the Flying Scotsman, which Gordon's based on, I need around a 60 to one turn down ratio in the gearbox. I've also coupled all the wheel shafts together to deliver more torque. So like my Thomas, I've tried to 3D print everything apart from the four millimeter steel rods I've mounted the gears and wheels on. I've also used some tiny bearings on the very high speed parts to reduce wear. The initial testing runs were surprisingly successful, both on the desk and on some track, although I had a few hiccups with corner testing. And the way of the back on the front wheels caused me some problems. Also, when I tried to test with Gordon's body feed, it became clear that my servo tester wasn't suitable, so I daisy chained a whole load of servo extenders together to give me slightly more reach. Eventually, I will use a complete remote control system, but for now, the servo tester is ample. All in all, I'm very happy with the current status of the build, although I'm not sure the best way to couple the wheels at the front of the boiler or under the cab because they need a lot of range to make it around these very tight corners, especially at speed. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments because I know a lot of seasoned modelers will have um, experienced this before. Hopefully a few weeks from now, I'll have a more complete model to demonstrate. In the meantime, thank you for watching and see me next time.